There's a lot of echo in here. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully it doesn't ruin the video. So today I want to talk about the legend himself, Hayao Miyazaki. Now, from the title of the video, you might it might seem like I've met Miyazaki-san in person. I have not. I've never met him, but I did buy his book. This book is basically like an anthology of loads of different interviews he's done over the years. Any kind of documented thing where he's written anything down, but most of all interviews. Now, I love this book and the reason is Miyazaki is a fascinating man. If you don't know, he's one of the lead directors at Studio Chibli and he's responsible for having birthed the ideas for some of the best animated films ever created. I think my favourite of his is Spirited Away, uh, My Neighbour Totoro, Castle in the Sky, um, Kiki's Delivery Service, just to name a few. So you've probably come across his stuff, Poco Rosso as well, you've probably come across it at some point and um, they're just magical stories. Now having a book like this is extremely valuable to me because you kind of get an idea of what he's like as a person and my life, one of my lifetime goals is to, uh, you know, be up there with people like Hayao Miyazaki. That's one of my lifetime goals, is, you know, uh, getting anywhere close to uh, how he is as a, as a creator and, and the kind of work he's made in his life, getting anywhere close to that would be a tremendous achievement. So why not strive for it? So I've, I've been reading this and basically I will just you know, when occasionally I will open it on a random page. It's one of those books you can just dip into. I literally open it on a random page and start reading. And you learn lots of nice little nuggets of wisdom from his, uh, from his interviews and things. So I've written down a few of the ones that I thought were really good, just a few of them. Uh, I'm going to try and link the, in the description this book for you to buy. Now, I'm not currently affiliated with this, but I'm going to try and find an affiliate link so that you know when you click it, maybe you get a discount or something uh, just to help you out with that. The first one, he looks to life first. He's, he imitates life. I know I always bang on about this, but this is why I bang on about it because he is such a, an example of someone who he always tries to go to the root of whatever it is. So for example, when he was, uh, when he was directing Princess Mononoke, he took all his crew out, well, him and the producer, out to the forest in Japan. I'm not sure which forest it was, but they took them on a trip there and they just spent, you know, two or three days taking photographs, filming things, and just getting a feel for the forest because a lot of the film is in the, set in the forest. So this is really cool. Instead of, let's say, browsing online for other animations that are set in the forest, I mean, that's all well and good, but he, he wanted to get the actual facts right first of what the forest is like, and then to put his own creative interpretation on. And this is why he's created his own style, you know? When you watch his films, they're not some kind of rip-off of another person's style really there, his own take on life. And I think that's really important. So that's like one of the biggest lessons I've been learning in that book. Number two, he creates characters. Now, how he creates characters, you could write a whole essay on this, but I've noticed that they're all quite complex. They all have a bit of depth to them. Um, and that's often that they're, they're not entirely good or bad people. They often, maybe they have, they set out and do bad things, but they'll do them for a good reason, or they will do good things for a bad reason, or something like that. And this builds a lot of depth, and it gets you really interested in these characters, and what motivates them, and what makes them tick. Now, I, I've just sort of glazed over that very lightly. Uh, it's such a deep subject, but when I'm creating characters now, I do think, why are they doing this? And is there a way that I can make the character more interesting and less flat, less two-dimensional? A flat two-dimensional character might be, you know, a villain who is out to destroy the world, and that's about as far as the explanation goes. 
you know, people don't really behave like that in real life unless they have a core motivation at the, uh, you know, at the center of it. The next one, now he, he talks a lot about uh, the audience and he says basically that as a storyteller you have to outwit your audience and he says you should never underestimate your audience. Okay, so the, audi the audience is smart and so you have to treat them like they're a smart person who can work things out. I really like that philosophy, I love that when I'm directing something now I definitely think to myself, okay, how can I not just spoon feed them the information but give it in the, you know, in the environment and let them sort of work it out like it's a jigsaw puzzle or something and give them a challenge, you know, challenge the audience, make them work for the goal in the end, you know, the satisfaction. And I really like that. So the audience is smart, don't underestimate your audience. Okay, so the last one, this is a bit of a technical thing, but I just read it in one of the paragraphs and I was very surprised by it. And it has since changed my look on directing and cinematography and all of that. A montage is the assembly of different images. There's this effect in filmmaking called the Kuleshov effect. Now, I think I might put up a clip here where uh, maybe Alfred Hitchcock will explain the effect. How it works is that you can assemble two different shots or three shots or whatever, um, separate images of things and together they create their own meaning. So Hayao Miyazaki just sort of, he explained that in the book and then he said, I think this idea is a load of crap. <laughs> Basically, he's a very outspoken man and when I read that I basically spat out my drink because I was like What? Because <laughs> this effect is like one of the cornerstones of filmmaking and so it was kind of uh, an exaggeration that he said it's a load of crap, but he said that every shot in the film should tell the story it shouldn't just be something that you piece together through lots of separate images, but every shot in your film should be composed in a way that tells the, the story. It's like a microcosm of this, the story at large. So uh, I think I've gotten into that a little bit in some of my previous tutorials, but uh, that, is, that is something that I really, I'm really interested in. And it's quite a profound difference in filmmaking to uh, other filmmakers. There are some filmmakers who literally just, you know, take, and there's nothing wrong with this, it's a different style really, it's, it's about style, but they take individual images or shots of things, they piece it together in the edit, and really the film comes together in the edit, there's nothing beforehand. Now, in, in his work, he, he will compose a shot so that it tells the story completely, or at least the scene in that, in that part. It's a very information rich way of telling the story, which I personally love. So that's definitely gone on to shape my style. All right, since, since I found this such an interesting topic, I thought I would show you a little bit more about this theory and hopefully, you know, this, this makes it more clear. Here's a quick picture I pulled up, I found on the internet, uh, which can explain what a microcosm is. So uh, here is a, microscopic picture of a brain cell and here is the a picture of the universe so you can see how the two are similar basically something can be very small and be a representation of something much larger here's another example i like this example so the the uh, veins of a leaf can look like the river network in you know like something like the amazon river we're not going to get into existential ideas i'll leave that for you to decide but for filmmaking and for you know art animation this is incredibly powerful and i think this is what miyazaki was getting at for some of it but anyway i'm going to show you some of my favorite examples and in fact i'm not going to show you them in film or in animation i'm going to show you them with with photojournalism so i think photojournalism is where you can find the most clear examples of this if you want to find these just l read newspapers look at the front cover of newspapers they hire photographers to go and you know if there's a major event they'll 
try and photograph the event and then they have to sum summarize what happens the story of what that event was about in like one picture so it's a great study into this so i'm going to show some of my favorites and just you know explain how they do this i love this image it's in syria and apart from that i don't really know much about it you know a lot of these i don't really know the major details but what you can see it, it it tells you the story anyway so you don't really need to know you can see these bullet holes coming through and you see the lines that they they narrowly miss uh these two soldiers so it, it tells the story right there that it just shows the danger that um soldiers fighting on the front lines are being put through and also, I think to add to the story, you see that their their focus is through this hole. So despite the fact that they're being fired on, they're very focused, brilliant image. And it shows the story right there, you know, in that one image, have all the ingredients, all of the information necessary. Uh, like I said, very information rich form of storytelling with the composition. Here's another one uh, set in Afghanistan. We kind of with the local people, I guess, and they're watching on helplessly as they see their homeland being bombed. So very different story, very different take on war, but it, it expresses so much with this picture. Um, and of course, the, the methods they're using for this, like the different layers, the foreground, the background, and, you know, keeping that all within one image, very interesting. So how you would do this with montage theory as opposed to this is you would show you would show one picture of the the locals looking at something off screen and then you would show the bomb site okay but this it it condenses them into one picture so it's very information rich this is one of my favorite photographs of all time it's at the berlin wall what an incredible picture you don't have to have all the answers but it tells you so much about a story there about a soldier's decision uh to break his code to help s someone who he doesn't know you know someone who's in need incredible story you know so much information just in the poses there the expressions it tells you so much about the story and it doesn't give you all the answers so you don't have to know all the answers you don't have to know why is the child crossing you just need to know he, he is trying to cross the 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 border uh, okay, very famous picture uh, when Muhammad Ali beat Sonny Liston. This picture was on the front of every newspaper and it summarized the fight. So, you know, Sonny Liston was just completely overwhelmed by uh, Muhammad Ali or Cassius Clay, as he was known at the time. Uh, and in front of the, the world stage, the whole world was witness to this, to him becoming heavyweight world champion i think that was i think that was the fight where he became heavyweight but i'm i'm not sure what a great pose to to just summarize the entire fight right there um this one is just one i recently found i thought it was really nice you know the fact that they you can tell that the, these are um locals in africa who uh have this close connection this intimate connection with uh the wildlife um in their area i thought that was a really nice way of displaying it with the you know the gentle hands on uh the rhino's face uh yeah really like that uh this one is super famous as well um again because it tells a story right there in the image so um the way that she's standing and it's perfectly upright perfectly balanced composed gentle these uh policemen are it's they're angled back so it's as if they're being blown back by this peaceful protest brilliant picture i need to find out more about it i think it was in atlanta uh during a protest it this is more of like a metaphor like this is getting quite metaphorical now so oh man it's it's a terrible terrible thing but it, it basically shows that the problem with racism in america and yeah very very powerful image
really makes you feel. So anyway, that's a few examples. I have more, but I just wanted to keep it to that. You can do it with with montage, and in fact, there are very good benefits to having to using montage. There's actually a, a technique I'm looking into right now, which I find fascinating, which is what I call juxtaposition. And I'm going to make a video on that in the future. And that's basically how you can use montage to build loads of meaning into your film. I know that Miyazaki said that every shot should tell the story as a whole, but it, you know that's a very difficult thing. And he also says in the book that he's that's what he's striving towards. It's not necessarily something that can be easily done. Uh, and also, you know, every film. Basically, every film uses montage theory as well, the Kuleshov effect. Yeah, don't stress out too much if you're like trying to apply this in every single shot. It's just something to keep in mind for certain moments in your film, perhaps certain scenes. Theoretically, it's a really cool idea. That's that. Let's go back to the video now. Now, I just want to show you, as well as uh, getting this book, Turning Point, there's also another book which I don't have, which is called something like Starting Point, and it's basically the one before this, and it's it's kind of about his earlier years as a, as a director and a, an artist. I haven't got that one, but I have got this one, and it's really good. Turning Point. Now, I also got Spirited Away, the art book, and I will I will probably cut in here to some closer shots of this book. It is magnificent, and you realise that. You know, yes, Miyazaki is an incredible mind, he's an incredible artist, but he's also got one of the best teams of specialists working for him, and that's extremely important as an auteur, that you have a team of specialists working for you. So, in this book you see some of the backgrounds, some of the character designs, and it's just flooded with inspirational, imaginative, designs and ideas. I was very pleased to get this as well. I'll see if I can also link this one in the description as well. I love this book. It's one of the newest ones in my collection. I collect these kind of art books as well. Uh, last thing I just wanted to put at the end of the video, uh, if you're a fan of the things that I'm making on this channel and you want to help support me, I've linked to my Patreon page in the description. It would be really cool if you could go there and pledge a certain amount. Uh, of your choosing. You will gain access to so many more videos and other content when you do so. For instance, the animatic you saw me creating in this was part of a pitch I did for a story. Um, and this is a story that I want to create with live action film. So I pitched that project and I put it on video. And so for Patreons, you can actually see me pitch the video idea uh, as if it was a commercial project, you'll be able to see the ending to the video and, and see how this story, the interesting twist that this story has. Um, and that's something that I've made just for my patrons. And there are lots of other things just like that. And as soon as you sign up, you'll be able to gain access to that. So I hope that you consider doing that. But if you don't, that's all right. Um, leave a comment, subscribe. That would be really helpful as well. Right, so that, that does it for that video. I hope it was insightful in some way. Now, I've just touched on some of the things in this book, so I really recommend that you buy the book for yourself and you just read it, maybe read 15 minutes of it before bed every day. That's a good habit to get into. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.